Hi everyone. So today we are going to learn about two concepts this week, co-op and floor time, okay? So co-op is a model and DIR floor time is another model. We are learning both the models today, I mean this week, and we are going to check how we can implement those models into our daily practice with our pediatric clients. Uh, there will be two discussion board uh, posts. One is individual and the other one is group. So, um, you ready? Let's start. Part one, co-op. What is co-op approach? Co-op is the way to use problem solving and guided discovery system of a child. Okay, so first of all, what is the co-op means? It is a cognitive orientation to daily occupational performance, okay? Just like how the name suggests, we have to go, we have to use cognitive strategies, orientation strategies to client, here, our child's everyday occupations and its performances, okay? And it is fully client-centered, performance-based approach how child is participating in his day-to-day -day activities, how child is participating in his uh, or hers um, academic skills, learning skills, everyday routines, and how child learns to problem solve or use cognitive skills such as planning, such as memorizing, such as executive functioning, such as uh, uh, organizing or time management skills or listening and implementing strategies, etc is all about co-op approach okay or model and we will be using it to implement and acquire guided uh, learning skills into the child for their daily occupation and their occupation is mainly the play okay um, and this approach also focuses on the identifying child's goals and priorities for the daily activities and help them to develop cognitive strategies to utilize them or to meet those goals. Okay, child is struggling with uh, maybe eating skills or child is maybe struggling with the bathing skills, so we will be helping them to do so. Uh, it is, this whole approach is based on the idea that cognitive strategies developed in the occupational therapy clinic or through therapy process can be generalized and child can acquire the same skill into their real life environments, uh, in the real situations, and it, it, it can bring long-term independence in that child, okay? So, what population do we serve or for with whom do we mostly use this uh, co-op approach? It's with the DCD, okay? Code Developmental Coordination Disorder and it is usually used for children between 6 to 11 years of age and it has been the research says that it has been very much effective for a variety of other diagnoses as well such as asd um who can use co-op of course occupational therapist we will we have like occupational therapists have designed this uh, co-op approach and um, because it's all about occupation and occupational therapy is working with the children and adults with mo uh, motor planning skills or motor related activities can use co-op approach very well uh, this can be also um, used by uh, teachers in the school uh, for their students to acquire learning skills and parents of course at their home if they can get training from an occupational therapist and they can bring desired behaviors or learning skills among their children. Um, basic approach means that we have to be as active as possible with the child. Parents have to be very much active and we need their active participation uh, to get its success and to generalize it because whatever parents will see in the clinical setting using this approach or model they will be implementing in the real life scenarios and this is how child will generalize the skill and he can do the same skill the way they solve the problem inside the clinical setting in the outside world. Um, also, we train parents because child is not going to get occupational therapy treatment every day. 
um, how do we apply this approach? Okay, so cognitive, organizational, occupational. Okay, we will be working on the, sorry, I was just distracted with other notes. Um, we will be imp this. We will implement this for the span of the ten weeks, one hour sessions once or twice a week. Okay, sixty minutes of sessions, ten weeks long, two two times a week. Sessions begin with discussion of the goals and plannings because of course that's what we do. We set some goals and we see the intervention planning and then we go from there. Homework is also given because active parent participation is very 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 important. And then certificate of achievement is also needed that, hey, we have received these many goals and now this is your certificate because you achieved this. You can do this activity by yourself and good to go. What are the benefits? It is very successful and effective for improving their everyday performances. Child can perform their daily routines, bathing, zipping up the pants or brushing teeth or um, tying shoelaces or eating by themselves or play, solve those mazes or puzzles or uh, make some Lego things. Uh, all those things, all their performances have been improved. Intervention matches the performance context, okay? So where if the child, child's, just like how we discussed that, we can only study on the table and chair or desk and sometimes we play in the playgrounds or whatever context is designed for that specific activity, this intervention matches with that because we focus on generalizing that skill. Child, If child is doing a monkey bar or zip line inside the OT clinic, they should be able to also do it in the community parks. So generalization is very important and that is why this intervention plan is, uh, approach is very useful. It should match, it matches with the practice context as well. Just like how we said, clinic and outside. Cost effective, very, very cost effective and it's very, very efficient. Um, what are some foundations of co-op uh, model? Behavior and cognitive foundations are child will be learning the basics. We will be learning basics of the theory. We will learn how to solve the problem, how different strategies to be used, and then how to improve different health domains and motor planning, motor performances. And as an occupational therapist, we will be focusing more on the occupational performance piece. So this is these are the foundations of co-op approach because we focus, focus on overall behavior, health, psychology, movement related information, and of course, overall occupational therapy related things. That's what we do on their occupations every day. So all these are firm foundations of co-op approach. Um, there are three main objectives of the co-op. Um, they acquire, so first objective is to acquire the skills, okay? Um, we want child to learn to acquire some new skill, then to develop cognitive strategies around it, how to improve cognitive orientation, how to improve, uh, use, use problem solving skills, how to use time management skills, and then how to uh, achieve the goals that we have desired for them and at the end we promote generalization whatever we have learned in the clinical setting how to do that in their natural environment and this phrase that I have given here goal plan do check is the main core concept of the this concept because we create some goals then we plan that means intervention plan then we actually do those activities with them and then at the end of the eighth week or ninth week we check or reevaluate you know what I mean and then we see where we are at so this is the whole uh, process goal goal plan do check GPDC under these objectives we will we will be receiving all these objectives using all seven strategies that is what we are going in details uh, client chosen goals so client will first choose goals that means client centered approach okay we will ask them what are your top three priorities or we will ask in this case to the parents uh, then we will have um, we will have them to compromise with the parents and facilitation of the goal generation that means that we will ask them what is most important for you and then we will narrow it down by compromising or discussing with the parents that what is possible what is not possible and we will 
narrow it down to top three priorities then we will discuss or interview parents that what are you struggling with what child is struggling with what are your priorities that will make your life easier what occupations if child will do will make their life easier then we will keep an a daily activity log for example one of the time they gave us like a timetable like this i don't know if you can see that let me uh how to do the blur anyway it won't happen but see sometimes you can see yeah so timetable one of the parents gave me a timetable of the child for every day daily activity log and that is what we want to know so that we can create our homework plans with them accordingly and pediatric activity cards or theopem all these things we use as an intervention plan under choosing the goals that what is most important for you can you rate bathing activity is most important out of scale what is your performance what 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 level of performance is your child doing right now is it number level two three and where do you want to be at number eight or nine or ten total dependent total independent just like that so we will be using different measures so that we know where we are at and where they want what are their expectations all about another feature is dynamic performance analysis we will be working on doing different performances and this is um I would say this is glorified activity analysis and here we want to know about how much client is motivated to do a specific thing if the client has knowledge about doing that task uh, what are their body orientation what are other features of the task that are needed are available uh, and accessible to the client or not another is how to use different cognitive strategies here we will be actually working around this GPDC uh we will be making calls what do you want to do i want to play tennis plan how am i going to do because of my my coordination disorder i'm not able to control the tennis racket in my hand i don't know how to do it you know carry out the plan so then therapist will create a plan and then we will actually implement that okay how about we use two hands four hands and then plan on doing that so you will be more regulated stuff like that and you will be actually practicing that using the hands and we will check that how these strategies work in child is actually able to play the tennis or not so cognitive strategies gpdc is very important again it is more clear here uh first we will introduce a strategy in a fun manner okay then child will repeat that practice that strategies and then therapist will model if there is something goes wrong we'll say no use this way use both hands together and we will demonstrate and every time when i say in pediatric practice always remember demonstration is the key always ch children always follow you what you do so do that child demonstrates understanding of the strategy at the end so that means it, they are carrying over the learned behaviors guided discovery what is guided discovery ot does not tell the child how to jump or how to forward roll how to solve the problem child discovers strategies to solve performance problem so what ha happens is that um in here we will be breaking the activity into different steps and we will ask the child we will help them to understand or we will help them to figure out things that how things are done yes demonstration is important at a certain stage but now as we are going upwards we will be asking them that what do you think can be done now how to solve this problem uh, we will be more taking over a coaching role and uh, we will make it more obvious for them rather than showing them what is wrong what is right etc so they and then it's all about they can do it it's about helping them getting that confidence that cognitive boost that okay everything is possible by themselves if one thing at a time is done enabling principles of course we have to make it fun it's we are kids who we are dealing with right now and we will be promoting different kinds of learning work toward independence for the children and promote again generalization of the behavior how to do the same tennis match that you are playing inside the clinical setting to the real world okay so this is what we will be focusing more on and then we will train or coach caregivers um, and according to this co-op um, 
model, they have to attend three sessions at least so that they learn how we are um, working with the child, assist and provide them homework so that they know what they are expected to do and what changes we want them to bring every week when they come here. And then we will learn a little bit about how is the intervention format look like. This is applied for the 10 weeks of the period, just like how we discussed for 60 minutes, once or twice a week, and three sessions, parents should be involved in the session. And every session starts with the goals. And then we will be using performance rating skills that how child is performing, uh, that parents wanted, like what are the rates that they wanted. Initially, child was not at all able to do the specific task and now he's able to do with moderate support or minimal support, etc. So we will be using different kinds of performance measures. Um, this is the case study example uh, given that uh, how we are uh, doing with that child. Um, so the child Mark is 10 year old child. Uh, he has DCD and he's referred to us uh, with as an occupational therapist assessment and intervention because he has difficulties with motor coordination okay now mark's full scale iq is above average level so he's pretty much he can understand the instructions his parents report that he's clumsy and difficulties with spatial awareness that's what the main problem is and also the case study also uh, adds that results from Standardized testing on of his performance skills indicates that there is some deficit with the visual perception and visual motor coordination as well. And Mark tells that tells that that uh, out he's left out of playing basketball with his friends because he's because of all these difficulties, visual motor coordination deficits or perception deficits and spatial awareness deficits. So he is not able to participate with his peers in his school. He's ten years old, so he wants to play basketball. And so here, what goal should be a proper goal? So here we have given an example of making a shot in the basketball, just one shot, okay? We are going one step at a time. But to break down that activity, how can we break it down using GPDC? So goal we have decided, now we are going to make a plan, okay? That uh, uh, how to, help the child learn basketball skills, okay? And that is what we are going to discuss. But uh, your discussion board includes that you have to pick a case study from our case studies, and then you have to break down uh, GPDC. So you have to write down four points, goal for that. For example, for Angela, you will pick one activity, for example, crawling. Child should crawl for at least four or five steps. Then what is your plan? Uh, you have to mention that that how you are going to achieve that plan within 10 weeks of span so make a brief paragraph about that what is your plan showing a toy first putting the right hand then child will learn a little bit so stuff like that you can pick any of the other activities too that child should be able to throw a ball into the basket or for asd child he should be able to cut with the scissors etc so you can pick any of the case study of the mike angela or anybody and then you can create a gpdc format for them only the P part, the planning part will be a little bit longer. Other than that, goal is one 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 sentence, sentence then uh, other things that we will be actually doing it. So doing part can be done that what breakdown of the task and pick only one task, okay? Just one task. Uh, for example, you're working on the th wall throwing, then just do that. Don't mix up a lot of tasks into one goal, okay? I want you to be very simple, very brief so that you can achieve that goal within 10 weeks. And then reevaluate is just how we reevaluate. Now, for the mark, we will be working on the plan. For example, how to throw the ball basketball into the net. We'll be focusing on something like this. Look at where we are aiming. Then he will learn how to bend his knees, reach up high into the cookie jar. That is another activity that let's reach, let's reach, let's reach. Then we will be working on bending the knees, bending the knees. Then we will be first look, work, we are breaking down as a first step that you have to look where is the cookie jar or where is the basketball hoop. Then we will make a rainbow with the, when I throw the ball like rainbow, you know, like here to there, it's a rainbow. 
because you are making this fun activity you have to use those words okay then let's make a rainbow like that and then we will throw the ball with two hand super power push like throw so we will practice all these steps one at a time and when he combines all these things into the real life boom he can play basketball okay but make it fun when you write your case study this is individual assignment make it fun use fun as statements okay and you have to also respond to your peers too just read the discussion board post but this is how we will be making a plan this is how we'll be breaking it down okay how we are going to do keep them keep the child as center of the intervention plan always keep mark or your case study angela as uh or sorry uh into the center of the plan and also we will be also getting parent or caregivers opinion so you can also mention in your post that okay we will ask parent that how many times did he practice did he follow my homework about like practicing once a week sorry once a day for five minutes etc so you design your own plan according to this and how you're going to achieve your goal within 10 months and then you will check where you are at how much improvement are you using what scale are you using what is the performance measure you started where there was no movement and now you are you need only minimal support so we are almost at number seven from zero to ten etc so yeah this is how we use co-op and it's pretty easy I just want you to understand that pretty thoroughly GPDC that's why I'm giving you this discussion board post and I know everyone can do this because uh, uh, we are reading all these case studies since long so pick only one activity one goal and then divide into GPDC be very brief very simple you do not have to be very tech techy or very uh, you know technological or terminology uh, but i want you to understand the core basics of of this approach so that you can implement right away okay 10 weeks 60 minutes of plans and one step at a time make it fun don't forget that okay so now we will start the next part that is a uh, floor time okay so this is about getting on to the floor this is a different model than co-op. DIR floor time, that means developmental individual difference relationship based model. Um, it is pronounced as DIR. DIR is a model and floor time is a technique. We are merging them together. Okay. It was developed by Dr. Stanley Greenspan in 1980s um, and and um, it was developed to work with the children with developmental delays okay and as you can see here the therapist is sitting on the therapist is sitting on the floor here with the child and they are not standing and telling them okay let's play with the Legos okay so this is what DIR means D describes development from the perspective of the individual where they are. So we will see what is child's developmental milestones are, what child is learning right now. And then we will start from there and go upwards. I stands for the unique ways in each person takes in. What is the, what is that the child loves the most? What is individuality of that child, okay? And uh, how child comprehends the world around them. Child needs more visual support or child needs more auditory support or verbal support etc so individualism is very important in this approach and r is relationship how you as a therapist will make a relationship with your child uh what are your social interaction way how close you can be how much child is keeping a distance with you all this relationship related information can be also put into consideration while using this approach Floor time in the basic sense, relationship-based approach. You have to be a child with the child. You have to get down on your floor. Um, it is the intervention piece is called as floor time because parent OT or caregiver goes down, gets down on the floor with the child to play and interact, okay? Just like how here we are seeing, you have to play with the child by being on their height, being at their level uh, and always play, play, play. This is fully play-based approach. Um, what are some of the parts? This is just for the information. 
um, developmental, we will be following the six milestones levels, individual that were how they process information, how they plan those activities in the relationship, how their mind will grow through the interactions or how relationship will help them to learn those new strategies, okay? So all those things are very much important. These are the six stages of the DIR. Uh, we will learn in the details all the stages. So this is just the list that self-regulation, intimacy, communication, complex communication, emotion, and logical thinking. Uh, what is the basic principle of the floor time? Follow always child's lead. If child wants to run to the left side, he will not run to the right side. You run with him to the left side. If child wants to jump from the second step of the stairs, he will jump. Always lead, unless it's safe, okay? Uh, join the child's world. You have to join the child. What child is doing for him, he has decided that and that is a very big deal. And you have to join them. Oh, you should not do that. Let's do this instead. Boom. You are not in their world. So get into child's world. Um, and be more functional, okay? Shared world will help them to trust you more. This is a play-based approach. So play is very important and play is very much important for all the children, okay? So play is a basic occupation for every children and floor time focuses on the play. Play helps them to learn through exploration. The child will, how exploration happens? Child will touch this toy and that toy and then they will learn about the textures, messy things or lot of other things and then they will learn through exploration and they will increase increase their attention span through because they are still figuring it out how to play this specific toy what is so unique about this so this is in a way helping them to increase their attention into the uh, into the play they are doing um, and we as an as an uh, floor time therapist or floor time you occupational therapists have to go we have to share that space with the child so they trust you they think that you are one of one just like him or her so utilize the model um first we will be using all the information that we have gained through dir what is child's individual difference what child loves the most what is developmental level and how child engages in the relationship how does he talk? How does he make sure that you understand? How does he trust you? And then we will facilitate achieving those milestones through play. We will meet if child is at the growling stage or child is at the grasping the pencil at the static tripod, uh, straight, uh, like fist grip or static tripod grip. We will start from there and go to the dynamic tripod or go to the running or walking stage of milestone development. Milestones are everywhere. Cutting has milestones. ADLs have milestones, um, gross motor milestones are always there. It is very much famous that we know, but every other fine motor skills, they have milestones. Just like how we learned in handwriting, when child learns to draw a straight line, when they learn to draw a circle, when they are able to cut a circle. All these things have milestones and we need to start from there. Uh, and then we go upwards. We will join the child in their world and what interests them and then we will develop that trust and shared space and slowly we will trick them to do whatever we want them to do no we will increase to the complex activities because now mastery has occurred into the simple task and it is also boring for them they also want challenges so we will introduce something else after cutting a circle we can introduce something like circle and square or some complex shapes if they know how to crawl and stand, we will include how to put two steps forward to walk, etc. If they can put the laundry into the laundry basket, now we will ask them to put laundries into the laundry basket to the washer, just like that. So we will keep moving upwards and moving to the next level of the milestones, okay? Now let's focus on the di different stages of the, um, how to do that, how to use this approach uh sensory processing if we and we will be following through the uh for example one child he is very much interested in learning about the tennis and we are teaching them using the floor time approach okay so we are learning on the floor but first of all we will see what child sensory processing skills are how child processes information 
uh, does the child get bothered with the bright light because tennis is something that we have to play in the sun or maybe in the bright lights what is that makes child super calm can child follow instructions such as deep breathing or take 10 breaths or count backwards etc or not what is their label does the child enjoy energetic expressions or like yay you can do this yay after every activity yay many children don't like it just don't do it i mean duh what are you doing just like that you know they will be thinking that way one of the child i had she will just look at me like whenever i'm up, I'm, I'm praising her she'll be looking like i'm the I am the dumbest person, you know, because uh, I'm praising her for something so easy that should not be praised for. So you have to be mindful that what energetic expressions you want to give them. Uh, it is overwhelming for them or they just want praise in a different way. Maybe you can give them a star or maybe you can just praise when they do five in a row or stuff like that. So you have to understand your child. You just cannot do the same thing with every child. Um, stage two is a falling in love um, we will interact make child we will share smiles and we will make that bond with the child so he trusts you and um, child will show you the energy okay so and when ch and child will learn how to engage the most with you Front door. sorry I'm in my office uh, then we will start two-way communications with them ask easy questions uh, but not related to the specific activity okay show them uh, what color of the ball is that or for example in the tennis schedule then we will show them what leaves are there is that a fall season what do you see what how child initiates any communication you know it says yes no says color and then you can expand your ideas and you can understand that okay child is now ready for the two-way communications or maybe more complex communication we will provide them some challenge we will ask them how would you like to show me throwing a ball we will explore different feelings we will explore like behavior different behaviors we will tell them that okay even though you cannot throw or roll a ball with me in this basket or towards this basket we will not cry or stuff like that we will say that yes i will try again i will try again like that so you have to work together with the child and make sure that you start doing complex communications with them and this is how it will be working then stage five is emotional ideas we will be developing different emotional ideas through play uh, we will develop a language that shares emotions okay uh, I want to win I want to try again I am happy I'm sad I don't like red ball I I want to throw the ball and that makes me um, feel good etc do not rely on outside movies or toys to spark ideas okay just make your own connection with the child because every child is different pretend play is very important uh, you will be pretending that you are in the playing the tennis game in the Wimbledon by rolling the ball or in the, even though you are on the clinic on the floor uh, you will focus on what child is most interested to do etc okay and finally we will build the bridges we will ask lots of W questions to the child why are you doing that when we will ask for his opinion I will feel accepted I will feel that uh, okay I'm important you know we will explain them that how to solve a specific problem we need your opinion and this is how you will build that relationship as you can see that now slowly therapist is moving behind the child and child is only playing but we are still on the floor but we are developing that individuality we are developing that independence in the play and the skill development is happening so we will explain why you doing first and then i join you or when you how about you just ask me for specific confusion or questions etc so this is how we'll be building different ideas uh here this is the picture i was talking about uh that therapist is behind uh, how normal floor time sessions look like just like how we learned in the co-op approach formal sessions range from two to five hours a day in OT it is hard but again we can provide them as a homework include training for parents and caregivers okay 
parents are encouraged to use the principles daily in their daily interactions ideally it takes place in the calm environment we don't need much of a noise as you can see the child in the far corner here uh, you see this child here they have created this red block and they are practicing behind that okay so it's a calm environment for that child um these are some of the example a child is tapping on the toy truck parent might tap a toy car in the same way okay tap 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 but different toys but the same way the parent may might put the car in front of the child's truck and add language to the game that okay how about you try the car now let's swap as child grows uh, therapists and parents match strategies with child's developing interest and uh, we won't give a 10 year old to play with the toy car you know now instead of playing with the trucks parents will engage with more aeroplanes etc okay so we will just grow as much as child grows and their interest grows we won't be sticking to the simple games what child wants otherwise they will get bored and they won't be engaged with you and there is no meaning of doing the floor time because they are not connected with you what are some of the key strategies use effect follow the child's lead follow the child lead just remember that treat behavior as intentional and purposeful and understand child's differences you have to understand the child you have to make sure that you are in charge but child should be thinking that he or she is in charge so lead him but guide him uh, let him lead you but guide him to be more specific create as many circles of communication as possible communication is a very much important key to develop and bring those strategies using w questions etc is very important focus on relationship always get down on the floor is very important you have to be on the floor you cannot just sit and tell child let's solve the 10 grains let's draw the straight lines you just go on the floor just play have fun floor time and co-ops are fun approaches and it just brings best results if you follow the right strategies so yeah this is pretty much it and there is a discussion board post too that is a group assignment and uh, you will be posting till monday night um it's fun just find out those so for this i think you can pick a picture and i think you can put those arrows that how you are going to develop all the stages of your floor time approach what are you going to consider in that specific activity uh, credit your sources etc and then do it just make a great post as possible use infographic if possible or make more creative um i just want you to want to understand that your group has understood floor time really well okay so use your own just model yourself or bring some pictures or some stories or some toys use be as creative as possible but show me how much um floor time is important for that specific case scenario that you are picking or you can pick any case study or you can use any typical children uh, child too because floor time is important for everyone altogether so let's do this good luck we will do the visual it's a long topic at the week 16 at the last week of the semester oh, okay um and another announcement is that i will be creating a new practice quiz up to week this week week 13 okay so you guys can practice practice quiz but within next two weeks i will also make sensory integration and visual topics related practice quiz if i will have uh, time and skills available uh, by end of week 15 okay so we will have this after midterm to this today's class quizzes ready soon so it's practice quiz no scores are counted but for your practice I'm so happy that everyone did midterms really well so i like to give you more practices so you can do well in the finals as well so feel free to email me anytime i'm here to help you and uh, for intervention plan if you have any questions feel free to reach out bye